Uh, with so much debris trapping people in the streets, this storm is causing everyday strangers to come together and help each other through this. That's right, Ashley. People are without any uh, people who are simply trapped on their streets with so much uh, uh, trees and uh, limbs falling all over the place. They have to stick together. They have to help each other. And that's exactly what we saw today. In some neighborhoods, the only way to get out of your street is to cut your way through. Yeah, I went and got my sheets. <laughs> with so many roads blocked by fallen trees, many residents are stuck in their driveways. We got out by driving up around and putting our car in the because we were afraid our cars would get crushed. And with city crews working full tilt to try and clear a path, it's up to those who can help out to pitch in. Pickering resident Martin Suits is just one of many people taking part in the cleanup effort. I asked them if they needed a hand. They were saying there were a few people that were stuck. They weren't going to be able to get out. We thought about it from an emergency standpoint, so we thought it might be a good idea to just... My chainsaw's here. For crews responding to this mess, the task at hand is enormous. Not only are fallen branches blocking the only way in and out of many areas, but trees bowing heavy with ice pose a hazard to homes and vehicles underneath. Frozen branches lean precariously close to power lines, threatening to plunge even more residents into darkness. And as night falls, the priority to keep power lines safe from debris is even more important. Progress is slow, but steady. Meanwhile, neighbors stop to show their appreciation. My wife's, my wife's got some homemade cookies. <laughs> you want a water now? I'd love Giving crews food and water, even when they don't have power to cook for themselves. They're already out here and uh, trying to fix up so people can get back to their daily life. It's really good. We're really happy with uh, them coming to help out. Staying positive when a good attitude and a chainsaw are some of the most important tools in the biggest weather event of 2013. Now, for those of you waiting for your street to be cleared, you may have to wait for a bit. Hydro crews have to first work on downed wires to keep areas safe before they can attend to clearing debris. In the meantime, if you're helping with the cleanup, a reminder once again to stay at least 10 feet from power lines and report it by calling 911. Reporting live, I'm Calvin Till. Colin, back to you. Thank you, Calvin. The Toronto District School Board also says all of its schools and education centers will be closed tomorrow. That means TDSB child centers will also be shut down. With weather like this, it's best to stay at home if you can. But if you do need to go out, prepare for major delays as well. Getting around uh, town is not going to be easy today and in fact tomorrow. Right now, there is no streetcar service. TTC crews are working to remove ice from the overhead wires. And there is no train service on the Scarborough Rapid Transit Line or Shepherd Subway Line either. Several other subway stations and GO Transit stations have also also been closed. You can check their websites for updates before you head out the door. Now, because Thornhill, in Markham generally, we, we started out with 17,000 homes uh, early this morning without power. That's down to 8,100 mm -hmm. homes. Most of those are in Thornhill, so we're providing shuttle buses from the Thornhill Community Center to the Millican Mills Community Center so that people can get over there. And I'm very proud to say that our firefighters have been out going to some of the either seniors' residents or apartment buildings where we know there's a high percentage of seniors making sure that they're okay and they know that this warming center is available to them. Let's uh, talk about uh, the possibility of full restoration uh, and that's going to be a, a, a firm, it's going to happen, but I guess the question is when through PowerStream? Well, I, I think we'll get most of our customers back on tomorrow. Uh, mm -hmm. You have to appreciate uh, there were crews on all night. There were crews on during the day. We're obviously uh, obligated by law to ensure that they get their proper rest. We want to make sure it's safe for them, and uh, certainly uh, they're, they're doing their utmost. In, in some of the areas, it really comes down to um, it's not a, a system thing per se. It's, it's really the fact that so many trees have come down and it's caused disruption to those lines feeding directly to people's homes. So hopefully by tomorrow, uh, most of those customers will be back on. I know in, in Markham, uh, all of our roads will be clear by midnight tonight. There have been crews going around 
making sure that trees may have blocked a partial or, or complete roadway have been cleared away so that vehicles can get through. But really we're recommending tomorrow and really encouraging employers to have employees work from home if they can. One, because there's a number of traffic uh, signals that are still out. And two, uh, the better our crews can get out there without the interference of morning traffic, the better they'll be able to serve the public. You know, Markham is a beautiful place, uh, tree-lined streets, but it's the trees that have really caused problems uh, because of the ice coating. Uh, I know it's been difficult for people to see their beautiful front and back uh, yards uh, covered in branches, uh, but also the power lines down. How prepared were you for this, and what kind of preparedness training do you go through as the mayor? Well, we have an emergency uh, preparedness plan. Uh, it's updated. Uh, our, our staff go, go through various scenarios. And, and I have to tell you, Anne, that's one of the things I was very proud to come in today and, and see our operations, uh, emergency operations, um, working very well with our staff. And, and I tell you, it was a calm a calmness in the room that you like to see and that calmness is there one because we have a plan two because they go through different practices with different scenarios and I think the one lucky thing this time unlike the the major blackout that we faced uh, many years ago it, it wasn't right across the whole city where, where people were impacted there there were certainly big segments of the city and I think that certainly made it a little easier but nonetheless we're always concerned about seniors about those people people that are vulnerable. It's just nice coming into a room where everyone knows what they have to do. Uh, there's updates hourly as to what the situation is, and obviously we're in contact with all of the emergency personnel as well. We're lucky to know that lots of people are with us right now on CP24, joining us, watching us, hearing all of the updates. Your chance to say something to your citizens in Markham, what would you like to say to them as they're going through this really difficult, challenging time just before the big holiday season? Well, you know, I think, first of all, I want to express my appreciation to all of our residents. I've, I've been on Facebook and Twitter and, and certainly through emails. You know, people are, are understanding of the situation. Um, there's some, obviously, I don't know, maybe they haven't turned on CP24 and don't realize what's happened out there and are wondering why their power is still off uh, with a few hours. Uh, but, but generally speaking, a real appreciation by the public, uh, people passing on their thanks to public workers, uh, everyone expressing, uh, wanting to make sure that they stay safe. So first of all, thank you for that understanding and appreciation. It makes everyone's job a little easier here when the public recognizes the challenges that are faced. And, and the other thing that I know is happening in Markham, it's happening actually right across the greater Toronto area, but I would just say extend that good neighbor.